think of yourself as a child where you were happy. Let several images flow to your mind and shuffle through them, focusing on what stands out. When I participated in this exercise with a group of students, our responses were remarkably similar, and we seemed to share that we were outdoors, unsupervised, engaged in play. Now think of an activity that you can sink yourself into, and it will temporarily suspend your reality. Perhaps a game, a walk, a novel, an artistic practice, a sport. And when you pull yourself out of it, you feel somehow lighter. This is play, and researchers describe endless benefits to play, but one does not engage in play for its benefits. Children repeatedly tell researchers that they play because it makes them happy. Play makes people happy. We're seeing an increasingly alarming rate of mental health diagnoses in children and adults that researchers are linking with play deprivation. Researchers have been warning us for decades that we are immersed in a steep decline of play, and as this continues, there will continue to be devastating results for human beings. An unplayful world is inhumane. My research aimed to understand and directly implement the measures one can take to revitalize play. I sat down with parents who had children age nine and younger, and we talked about play. They walked me through their day, and I carefully coded our conversations, searching for patterns that would illuminate facilitating factors and barriers to play. I used my own experiences as a mother of two young children to strengthen the theory, and I used action research as the patterns grew stronger around access to play to create that access. The byproducts of this research will live long past my graduation date and include a website that sees hundreds of visitors per day, a social media account with over 2,000 members, and the formation of a nonprofit organization that seeks to create the access to play in the community that my research has highlighted is missing. Participants describe this society as decidedly unplayful, and yet this research has been surprisingly hopeful. Participants demonstrated great agency over play, and the greatest catalyst to play was the awareness of play. Participants who held on to a playful sense of self created play opportunities for those around them. Early learning in school environments that valued play increased access to play for an entire community. Participants who had access to well-being supports described how this supported their play and how their play seemed to support their well-being. Participants demonstrated an ability to reclaim play back from adult-structured, pay-to-play indoor environments to child-structured, free outdoor environments. This research has been a direct participation in a community-led movement towards reclaiming play, and such a thing is a radical act of creating a more just and humane world. Thank you.